In this workshop on critical reading, we're going to take time to distinguish what it means to read critically. And we'll, we'll perhaps use a comparison of casual reading to get there. But in general, we want to ask the question, what does it mean to read critically? How do we read critically? And then I try to identify strategies that you can use to engage your academic texts to read them critically, and other texts for that matter. Very often, we take this idea of being critical of something in a negative way. It's this kind of pejorative, right? It bears the connotation of, you know, bad. It's not a good thing to be critical. No one likes a critical person, for example. But the idea of criticism, of being the critic, of being critical, is, is something that identifies or points to this idea of discrimination. You're a, dis you're a discriminating reader. You know how to find things, to take them apart and look for, to judge them. And that's the idea of being a critical reader. When you look at a text and you read it from start to finish, I always use the example of a Harry Potter, for example, or any sort of novel or fiction or short writing, generally speaking, we don't read it critically. We, we read it passively. And we may think about it, but the idea of reading critically is taking apart information to judge it. And the, the experience of judging can't take place at the same time as the experience of reading. When that happens, it kind of um, conflicts with one another. So this course and your first year writing courses in general ask you to implement a couple different ideas here, the rhetorical reading notes and the summary, to help you to engage with your text critically. And that's really what you're doing here. So maybe you're taking notes, maybe you're um, writing in the margins, maybe you're highlighting, maybe you're circling, maybe you're asterisking, maybe you're doodling. Whatever it is you're doing to engage with the text beyond reading in order, word for word sequentially from page one to page the end, you're doing so to engage the text. And there are two kinds of things we're doing when we're engaging the text. We're asking what questions, you know, who is the author, uh, what is the title, when was it written, that factual data, in order to get an idea of how is the text working. Maybe that's structural, maybe that's pattern-based, maybe that's purpose, to get to those bigger picture things. Because oftentimes what you encounter here in a, in a university level class is texts either you don't know how to read, texts you're not prepared to read, texts you don't want to read. And for any number of reasons, and you can choose your own here, and it probably varies by class, you still have to read them, right? You have to read them to complete the class, to learn something you don't want to learn about or do want to learn about or aren't feeling comfortable with yet. Whatever the reason, you need to have a set of tools available to you. And that's what critical reading does for you. As an aside, very frequently we work with three and 4,000 level major courses in nursing, for example, in other health sciences, where faculty are frustrated by students' inability to read and process information. It's easy to highlight and you know, say, I read it, but to say I read it, understand it, can be critical of it to find its strengths, its weaknesses, and explain what it means, that's a different level of reading, right? You're reading nonfiction more frequently now in these classes, and so you need to be prepared to, to take them apart, to read them critically. That's, and you can look at the proper reading notes and the summary idea, but that's what you're doing in these first year writing classes. You're encountering difficult texts to work with and practice, taking them apart, to be critical of them. So you can ask questions about how do we engage with the text. And this is any number of ways. There's not one prescriptive way to do it. Instead, you first have to accept that you are engaging the text, that you're reading it critically, right? That's the first step, that you're not going to read it casually. Maybe on your first reading, you do read it casually and you read it and say, I don't get it, or what did I just read? I don't know. But that's the moment, that's the, the, the occasion to, to come back to the text and come at this text not as a crisis, but as an opportunity to say, well, what kinds of things can I do with this? How can I take apart this text? How can I engage it? And so we have so many strategies, and I'm sure you already use many of them, but it's asking the question, in service of what? Why do you highlight? Why do you annotate? Why do you put things in the margins? Do you write little sentences at the bottom of each page to summarize the page? I do. That's how I remember what everything is. So when I'm done, I can read from the first page to the last page, my one sentence to the end, and it's a paragraph. It's already a summary. And it's easier for me then to think about what I've just read in what order and how those things kind of build on one another. That's the idea of, of critical intervention, critical reading, active reading, taking a pen or some sort of writing instrument to the text to make it a new text. If your text ends up looking like the same text it was when you started, you've probably only really engaged it passively or you're using a computer to take your notes. Either way, know that you have strategies available to you. So we can think about 
your reading, a critical reading, is generating new information. So when you engage a text, you want to mark it up, you want to find information, you want to look through it. You don't want it to act on you alone, you want to act on it. You can ask certain kinds of questions, what questions, like what does this text mean, or how does it, uh, rather, what does the text mean to the author? What's the relationship of the author to the text? What is, it, what is the author trying to do? What's the overall big picture here? And how does the author do those things? Is it pattern? Is it structurally made to be a certain thing? Is it paragraph, stacked on paragraph on paragraph? Is it an introduction and then clearly labeled headings to help you find information more quickly? How does the thing work? How is it patterned, for example? And there are other common questions you can ask. And you'll notice that, for example, these are things we ask you to do in the rhetorical reading notes to kind of give you a tool for how to approach those things. So are you looking closely at the title and saying, well, what does that mean? Does it make me think of anything? Is there any word association it makes me think of? Does it make me have feel a certain way? Do I immediately hate this idea or love this idea, connect to it, or feel alienated by it? Do I notice any common words being reused over and over and repeated throughout the text or a structural pattern? These are things worth noting, right? These are the things that critical readers do when they read a text. They ask questions and they're always looking for something to make a connection. And that's how the questions work for us. The rhetorical reading notes ask you to ask questions to make connections. And as an aside again, think of the rhetorical reading notes not as a prescriptive way of reading. Those are just sample questions one can ask when reading. Those are the questions that expert readers in the writing program have put together as questions they commonly ask to get a lot out of a reading and to make it an important text for them. So you could have different questions on your rhetorical reading notes if you wanted to. You could ask different kinds of questions, non-rhetorical questions, for example. It could be stylistic, it could be mechanical, uh, as examples. But the idea is to engage the text in a critical way. So I always like the idea, and I always promote this one for students, but summarizing piece by piece. So when you look at the rhetorical reading notes handout, you might see a section on the bottom that asks you to summarize each page in a word or a phrase or a sentence. That's your opportunity to kind of reduce things and say, there's a lot going on here, but if I added one takeaway, it would be this. And then when you put that over the, um, you know, over a line with a little plus sign at the bottom, you get a big picture, right? So that's what you're trying to get at. And here on the last slide, you'll see an example of before and after, right? So uh, Taylor here has taken the time to actually go through this text and engage it critically. It's not marked up beyond, you know, new reading, but it's marked up. He's gone through and he's read it now once. So a life beyond reason. Why? What life? Whose life? What's going on here? Why is this thing being marked up? So what's beyond reason mean? Does that mean illogical, irrational? You can start asking questions because that's, that's the goal. When you're being critical, you're asking questions because you want to exercise your discernment. You want to be critical of it and you want to think about, well, what can I do to make this text more useful to me, more enjoyable to me, more familiar to me? If a text is hard to read, that's okay. You still have the skill set to read it. If you have the ability to read English or read this thing word for word, you can make it mean something. That's why we have the rhetorical notes. That's why we have the summary. When you read these texts, they're built for you to be read. The question is what tools will you bring to that reading to help you best read it? Conversation with your peers, with your roommates, with your instructor, with your GA, with your peer tutor. Um, those are great ways to do it. Um, end of reading summaries. Summarize what you read, right? Anytime you write a summary of something you've read, you're putting on the paper what you think about that text right now. And when you revisit it later, you can look at it and see, oh, I thought this about that. Man, I was wrong. Or, wow, that was really off. Or, that was a really good reading of that. And then you look at your peers' summaries, and you look at your peers' reading notes, and you see that there's a whole s spectrum of how to read things. Everyone engages a text differently. The question for you, though, is how are you going to engage this text critically going forward?